What's going on, everybody? How about you? Here we go. We're going to talk about trucks. I get a few questions every now and then. Hey, Rob, man, uh, what kind of truck would you recommend? Well, I can't tell you that. <laughs> I really can't. Um, you know, we did a, a Rob and Woody show over on L and J last week, last Wednesday, about buying your first truck. Um, basically, the best way to go about it, you know. And the first thing is is deciding if that's really something that you want to do, you know. Is is being an owner op or or being a lease op, whatever, um, is that for you? You know, we talked about the good, the bad. Um, hell, I broke that down on my previous videos. You know, the ups and downs out here. Is it for you? Um, you know, and then we get into the question of, well, what kind of truck? Specifically, what kind of truck? What kind of truck should I get? I don't know. I don't know. You know, um, they're all good. They've all got their good and their bad. You know, um, I've had... The only truck that I have not driven is a Volvo and a Mac. So those are the only ones that I can't speak of, you know, um, other than than friends of mine or uh, watching other people's videos out here with their experiences uh, with Volvo and Mac. Uh, I've driven an international. I've driven a couple internationals. I've driven a few Peterbilts. I've driven two Kenworths and uh, a few Freightliners. So, I can speak for all of them, you know. Um, it's my experiences with with international. Um, hell, I'm in an international Lone Star right now. Um, I had, I believe it was around a 93, no, uh, 2004 international 9400i. Um, that was a decent truck, really was. Uh, I was green as hell though when I had it, so I didn't really know. Um, I was just getting into trucking, you know, so I was learning, uh, learning on that one. But uh, at the time, it was a good truck, you know. I didn't really have any problems. Um, had a Pro Star with that old Max Force in it, and uh, that was nothing but problems. Uh, obviously, you guys know about that. Stay away from them, them Max Force trucks. Um, unless they've been completely rebuilt, um, then you can look at them, but educate yourself on it. Um, to me, uh, internationals are, are great trucks. Um, even in this Lone Star, their, their flagship truck, you know, their, their, their Cadillac truck, you know, it's a beautiful truck. It really is. Um, the drivetrain is solid. Uh, the exterior is solid. It's got good looks, good style. Um, it rides great, rides smooth, it's pretty quiet, um, got quite a bit of wind noise, but where I think International falls a little bit short is the, the fit and finish uh, on the interior. You know, it, it, it looks good, but once you start kind of playing with it, um, it's just kind of, I hate to say it, but it's kind of on the cheap side, you know. Um, the materials, the feel of everything is kind of it's just the fit and finish of it, you know. The panels don't line up exactly perfect. Um, there's some gaps here and there. Stuff doesn't fit exactly perfect. Um, but when you look at it from a distance, it looks it, it looks good, you know. Um, other than that, that's really my only complaint about internationals. Um, Peterbilts are are great trucks. Kenworths are great trucks. Um, fit and finish on them is top notch. That's their thing, though, you know. It's a it's a premium uh, premium truck. You're getting what you're paying for. The prices of Pete's and Kenworths are are a little bit higher. You know, um, they hold their value. Everybody wants a Peter or or a K Dub. You know, I get it. Hell, I've driven them. You know, I've never owned one, but I've driven them. You know, great trucks. They're great trucks. You know, the downfall to Peterbilt is their price. They're pricey. You know, they're they're expensive to buy. They're they're more expensive than the other trucks, you know. Um, I guess it's that supply and demand thing. You know, everybody wants one. 
so they can be a little bit more expensive uh, parts are a little bit more expensive and you know, it's just a little bit more expensive truck you know but you know you are getting what you're paying for uh, they're great trucks they really are fit and finish is good drivetrain is good it's good trucks you know um, Freightliner also good trucks Freightliner is kind of kind of they, they score a five or a six all across the level you know um, just good all-around truck really um, the drivetrain is good the fit and finish is good um, parts are good service is good and um, just all around general truck you know um, cost of ownership is, is pretty low uh, you can pick up freight liners for pretty cheap uh, versus the Peterbilts and the Kenworths you know where they're a little bit more um, internationals are, are about on the same level as price uh, for the internationals you know give or take but uh, just general general uh, work truck basically you know um, that's the best way I can really describe a Freightliner um, fit and finish of the interior is is good um, above average you know um, I like it you know I like I like Freightliners I like Pete's I like Kenworths I like internationals you know uh, like the, like I said the only trucks that I've never sat in or been gone down the road is a Volvo or a Mac so I don't know you know I can't really speak on those trucks you know but the bottom line my personal opinion on trucks is it's all up to you it's all up to you what do you want you know what are you out here for um, are you going if you buy the truck are you going to run the wheels off of it you know until it's ready for the junkyard are you going to put three million miles on it and then scrap it you know that's something you got to think about or you know if you're trying to build a fleet if you're starting out you want to build a fleet five or six twenty trucks whatever or you know if you're not really sure how long you're going to be out here you know and basically if you would end up selling the truck you know um, you're going to run for a few years and maybe sell it or trade it in you know, uh, Pete's and K-Dubs, they hold their value a little bit better. You know, you can do the research on that. Check used trucks. Go online right now. Check used trucks. You know, you, you, you put a, a 04 uh, Freightliner versus an 04 Peterbilt, whatever. It doesn't matter the model. You know, just similar features, right? Similar features, all right? The Pete's going to be a little bit higher. The Kenworth's going to be a little bit higher. It holds their value a little bit more, you know. But they're both equal as far as making money you know they, they can make you the same amount of money and that's what we're out here for you know <clears throat> so it all boils down boils down to what you're looking for in a truck you know um you know do your research like we were talking about on the radio show uh if you're looking into used trucks i don't care the brand it doesn't matter to me you know um I'll talk to Volvo drivers, I talk with Mack drivers, I talk with Freightliner drivers, Pete and K-Dub. We're all out here doing the same thing, to me. To me, it, it doesn't really matter uh, what's behind the truck either, what trailer you're pulling, flatbed, hopper, reefer, dry, um, tanker, doesn't matter. Because the fact of the matter is, when this left door is closed, we're all out here doing the same shit. What we do outside of the truck, out back, that's different, yeah, sure. But when we close this door, and we're going down the road, we're doing the same shit. Same traffic, same four-wheelers, same finances, same, it's the same shit. We're all doing the same shit, you know. So the badge on the hood up there don't mean nothing to me, you know. Um, if, if you're after... You know, if you're wanting that super truck for your very first truck, I personally would, would advise against it, you know. Um, your, your very first truck needs to be just a, a monster of, of revenue, you know. Um, has to have a, a good, get good fuel mileage. Um, be profitable for your first time out here, you know. You, you may not want, now don't get me wrong, I love them old school trucks, man. I love a hood truck. I love the hell out of it, man. I love chrome. I love old school trucking, man. I really do. 
but we're out here to make money. You know, my recommendation for somebody's first truck is something middle middle of the road somewhere. You know, something that's affordable, something that has a good maintenance record, something that's going to get decent to good fuel mileage, something that parts are 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 pretty cheap for. You know, stuff like that. You know, do your research. Um, do your research for a uh, a water pump for a Cummins versus a water pump for a Detroit for a DD15. You know, uh, look at these pieces and parts. You know, what's it going to cost to replace it when it's when it's time to replace it? You know, or, or when it needs work. The information is out there, guys. You know, and don't necessarily take people's word for it because people are biased. You know, um, I talk to people where all that's all they'll own is just a Peterbilt. That's all they've ever had. That's all they'll ever own, and if, if you don't have or, or drive a Peterbilt, you ain't trucking, you know. And that's fine, you know, that's fine to each his own, but, you know, I'm neutral. I'm kind of, I'm Switzerland um, when it comes to truck, to uh, what kind of truck, you know. I'm, I'm totally Switzerland on, on what type of truck. I love old school trucks. Hell, I love cab overs, man. I wouldn't mind uh, running up and down the road in an old cab over all buffed out, all pressed out, you know. But it just, you know, it doesn't make sense, you know, um, to me, to me, as, as a first truck, you know, or, or be your primary truck, you know. Um, it needs to be a monster of revenue, bottom line. I mean, it needs to be a revenue monster, man. Something affordable, something that you can afford, something that you can budget for. Um, good fuel mileage. Good, good repairs, you know, like I said before. So do your research on it. Um, by all means, any kind of used truck you're looking at, check the maintenance records. Please check the maintenance records. Do not make an emotional decision on your truck. Make an educated decision on what kind of truck you're going to buy for your first truck or your second truck or your third truck, you know. They need to make money. You know, if there's if the, the maintenance record is kind of kind of sketchy, um, you know, there's there's a gap in maintenance. You know, there's there's some pages missing out of the maintenance record. You know, uh, beware. You know, uh, especially with these these uh, newer emissions trucks. You know, they're not the devil. Don't be scared of them. You know, that's what we talk about on on the Rob on the radio show on the Robin Woody show. We talk about these emissions trucks. Um, what they are, what the pieces are, how to take care of them, when to take care of them, you know. If there's not a proper maintenance record, and, and say the DPF, if you're looking at a truck that, that's got 400, 500,000 miles on it, and you can't find anything in the maintenance record about having the DPF cleaned or replaced, or having the EGR cleaned or replaced, um, all the, the, you know, the DEF filters, all that emission stuff. If that's never been done, if you can't find any record of it, I'd probably tell you to run like hell, you know. But, on the other side, if you get a 500,000 uh, 500, mile truck, and you're looking through the maintenance records, and it has been maintained, uh, uh, you know, crazy. I can't think of it, <laughs> meticulously meticulously maintained you know just at every point it has been maintained you know at 250,000 the DPF was cleaned okay now at at 450 the DPF was replaced okay that might be the truck that really might be the truck all the filters were replaced the DEF filter was replaced you know the EGR was cleaned all that stuff if it's got that solid maintenance record there's your truck. There's your truck. But a half million mile truck with no record of any emissions maintenance at all. I don't care what it is. Run. <laughs> Run like hell. Because how it's going to work is as soon as you sign the bills, uh, sign the papers on it and drive it out, maybe your second load, your third load, that damn check engine light's going to come on. DPF is clogged. EGRs is is messed up, you know. The, the the Delta P is messed up. Everything's messed up on the emission system, and it goes from there. You know, these things are, are very fine tuned. Uh, there's sensors everywhere. 
And if it hasn't been maintained, you know, what I'm saying is do your research. Hell, uh, do a, get an oil sample, okay? Google it, uh, an oil sample. It's, it's out there, you know? Um, you can buy the, the sample kits online, they'll ship them out to your house. Um, there's lots of places out here where you can buy them over the counter, you know? Um, basically a specimen cup, <laughs> you know? Just like when you take your pee pee test, you know? Give your truck a pee pee test that you're thinking about buying. Don't make that emotional decision. Don't say, oh man, it's the color I like. It's got all the chrome, man. It's got chicken lights on it. Um, it's, it's a premium, super ultra platinum interior, man. It's flawless. It smells good. <laughs> this is the truck. But it could be a piece of shit, you know? The drive line could have been a piece of shit. You know, yeah, the previous driver washed it every week and rubbed it with the diaper every Sunday, but never changed the oil, never never cleaned the DPF, you know. It could be the biggest piece of shit on the lot. It could be the shiniest turd on the lot. You know what I'm saying? Don't make an emotional decision. Do your research. If you're out here to buy a truck, get an oil sample. Back on the oil sample. Get the oil sample kit, you know. And you don't have to drain the oil. You don't have to crawl underneath and, and undo the, the drain plug and <laughs> try to catch some oil. It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, that's one way to do it. But you get what's called a vampire tube. Basically, it's just a long uh, tube with a with a, a, a syringe on, on the back of it, kind of. And you, you stick it down in the, uh, uh, in the dipstick tube, down in the oil, and you suck out some oil. You know, run it. Run it for a while, get the oil circulating, and then take a sample and put it in your specimen cup, seal it up, mail it off. Wait for the results to come back on that engine. You know, is it still good? Is everything still good on it? I don't know. You know, you're making that educated decision. And I don't care if it's a Pete, Volvo, Mac, Freightliner, it doesn't matter. Make that educated decision on it. That's all that matters. You know, check your maintenance records. Get an oil sample. Hell, run it up and down the road. Take it for a test drive. Don't just don't just walk around it. You know, and say, "Oh man, it's beautiful." Take it for a ride. You know, and, and ultimately, I know it's kind of hard, and usually it won't work. But ultimately, you want to drive it, take a test drive under a load. You know, I know it ain't gonna happen. But in in a perfect world, that would be cool, huh? Hook hook the, the truck up to a loaded trailer. And, and take it on a 200 mile run, see how it runs, you know. That won't happen, but hey, you never know. You never know. Bottom line is, do you research, guys? I am unbiased on trucks. I love old school trucking, I really fucking do. I would love to have my ultimate dream truck that I'm gonna build one of these days. I'll, it won't be my daily driver. It'll be my, my show truck. It's an old FLD. Old Freightliner FLD, flat top, all stretched out, long-legged bitch, man. That's what I want. You know. Will I drive it every day? No. Be my show truck, you know. But that's my my ideal truck. You know, I love the K-Dubs, I love the Pete's, I love hood trucks. You know, everybody kind of points their finger. Oh, you you only care about about the emissions trucks, and you don't like old school truck and Rob. Truck and Rob don't like old school trucking bullshit i love it man i love it i love them old trucks man but trucking is changing the trucks are changing we're getting into everything's tight man every the trucks are killing the trees blah 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 you know we got a stricter emissions so what are you gonna do you know so there you go that's all i got on that do your research out here guys pick the truck that's right for you that makes sense for what you're going to do okay does that make sense? <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. We got to go trucking. My time is up. I got to go down the road and make some money. How about that? So remember to uh, be the professional. Set the example out here. Help your brothers and sisters. Spread some information. If you know something that somebody else is struggling with, help them. Give them, give them a hand. So, All right, guys. That's it. We'll talk to you later.